Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics and the video question line. Today's topic is drafted surfaces and the from to modifier. So the question that was submitted is what would be a proper way to tolerance a tapered profile? And with that question, the person submitted a couple of screenshots. And this screenshot here is the first attempt at trying to control the taper between these two surfaces here. Now we see a dimension here, 8.92 millimeters plus 70 microns plus 20 microns. That gives us a size range of 8.94 to 8.99. Now, as I understand it, the intent is to make sure that if we do measure at 8.99, we don't taper all the way down to 8.94. We'd rather only allow so much taper that it goes down by 20 microns, resulting in if it measured at 8.99 at the top, it can only taper down to 8.97 at the bottom. Now, if we measured at 8.9 four at the top, we could taper up to 8.96. So we could get a little bit fatter on the bottom, but again, only growing in width by 20 microns. So if that's the design intent, as I understand it, we have two parallel surfaces nominally, and our goal is to give some relatively large amount of size and some relatively smaller amount of orientation between those two surfaces. So how we can accomplish this uh, using standardized practices, because obviously this kind of falls apart as far as a, a good practice, um, we can lean on a couple tools within the GD&T toolbox, and we can see those options here. Again, I've outlined the two criteria here being that we can have a large size, right? Five, uh, 50 microns of size, but we don't want to utilize all of that size if this thing is going to taper at all. So those are the two criteria for both these options. We're gonna go through those and make sure those still stand true here and see how we can add the benefit of using standardized methods to control the amount of taper these two surfaces can see. The first one I'm gonna outline here is the one on the right. And what we see here is we have a size dimension controlling the overall size of this width feature to 8.965 plus or minus 25 microns. Now, if you do the math, that does equate out to 8.94 to 8.99. And we can see we are controlling the overall size of this thing. So if we had some level of taper, we would see that we could go from 8.99 to the top, all the way down to 8.94 to the bottom based on the size dimension. And what we can see here though, is that we're allowing much more than the 20 thousandths of taper on the width, but we're gonna go ahead and refine that. So we're gonna see when we get to parallelism, how we're going to fix that. Now, this position symbol is controlling the location of the midplane of our feature. So if we have a midplane derived from these two surfaces right here, we are making sure that the position of that midplane is coplanar to our datum feature B, since we listed B here. Now, datum feature B is this width right here. So we establish a datum midplane down the middle, and we establish our positional tolerance zone for this thing uh, right here in line with that datum B. Now that means if our feature shifts over to the right, it's going to take its midplane with it. As long as that midplane is plus or minus 10 microns away from datum plane B, we've met our position as well. So we can see that we have position and the overall size controlled. But again, we're making sure that we don't taper all the way down to 8.94 if the top measures at 8.99, for example. So in order to do this, we're going to refine the orientation of each one of these surfaces separately from this control. So we still get a large size, but if the top measures at 8.99 here, we can only allow 10 microns of horizontal deviation with respect to datum B. So we can't deviate all the way into 8.94 anymore on the bottom. We can only deviate in 10 microns. So if we deviate in 10 microns both directions, that's a reduction in size of 20 microns, meaning we could go from 8.99 at the top down to 8.97 at the bottom because of these additional callouts. We won't get to utilize the entire size dimension because we've refined the orientation of those to a max 10 microns. So worst case scenario, we can only be uh, from 8.94 to 8.99 based on the size dimension. And depending on what the worst case size there is, we can only deviate horizontally with each surface uh, 10 microns total. So you see our worst case scenario would be a reduction or a growth in size along the taper of those two surfaces 
of no more than 20 microns considering both surfaces together. So keep that in mind. Uh, we can control both of those uh, specifications with this sort of methodology here. And what we've done is we've collected a size dimension, controlled the location, and then refined the orientation of both those surfaces. So this is one option. The other option we have here on the left is doing it a little bit differently. What we're doing instead of controlling the size directly is we're controlling the overall size by controlling the location of each of these surfaces. We are defining the location of this surface and this surface with profile of a surface. Now, each one of those is allowing a deviation total of 25 microns, meaning we can deviate out half that value and out half that value. So we can grow in width by 25 microns. We can also shrink in width by 25 microns. And if we know our nominal is 8.965, just like we saw over here, we have a plus or minus equivalent of 25 microns, since each surface gets to deviate 25 microns total. So we can go out half that value, out half that value, or in half the value on both surfaces, resulting in a plus or minus equivalency of 25 microns. So we have definitely recreated that size condition here where we can have a large overall size. Um, but we've also then gone ahead and refined that orientation just like we did here. So if that surface is over here, or it is way over here, we can only deviate in 10 microns if we're utilizing this half of this tolerance zone or this half of the tolerance zone. We're refining the orientation that was being defined by profile of the surface to a much smaller one, but we can still deviate in position left and right. We just can't have that full orientation uh, relying on this 25 microns. So again, we can control the overall location uh, which gives us a size control, and we refine that orientation with the parallelism call-up, just like the previous example. Both these options are fair game. Uh, there's not uh, one that's better than the other. It just might depend on the criteria uh, and your specifications that you would like reported. Uh, this one here gives you a direct size report that you can control very specifically. Um, but again, not really much in the terms of uh, huge pros and cons over the one unless you really analyze the functional intent of this part. So hopefully that helps clarify that. One key aspect to both these examples is we have nominally paralleled surfaces. So both of these surfaces are nominally parallel, right? That means they are 180 degrees or zero degrees from each other. And if that's the case, this holds true. But the other image that was sent to us from the student shows this screenshot, which is attempt number two at controlling the profile of both these surfaces and its taper. Now. What brings a question to my mind is that we have different size down here than we do up here, showing us that we can have a smallest dimension of 8.92 at the top and the largest dimension of 8.9 at the bottom. And if that's the case, and now there might be some rounding errors here, but I'm going to imply that maybe the design criteria is that we have a nominally tapered surface right? By design, we want taper on these surfaces, but we only want to allow so much taper, right? Uh, if that's the case, there's one thing that we can do uniquely by giving more tolerance up here than we do down here if that's the in intent or our, our interest. Um, so we're going to jump to this next drawing here that I've created um, that implements a few unique things. We can see that we have a uh, a nominally tapered feature because the bottom has a basic dimension of 8.89 and the top has a basic dimension of 8.945, meaning the bottom is smaller than the top. And if that's the case, that's perfectly fine. What we might also be interested in is saying that this top can have more deviation, right, than the bottom can have. The bottom can have a little bit of deviation, but the top can have more. So the further away you get from this bottom, the more you can have tolerance rooms, right? So if that's the case, something very unique we can use is the from to symbol. It's just the simple arrow between point W and point X, point W here, point X here. And as we go from W to X, our tolerance zone can change from 20 microns to 50 microns. So we can see our tolerance zones would look like this. There'd be a bit of a wedge shaped tolerance zone where the bottom at its smallest is 20 microns but it grows outward, allowing more deviation the further away we get. The further away we get up to 50 microns at point X. And so now we can see we have a large amount of taper at the top and just a small amount of taper at the bottom. 
again, away from our nominal sizes here. Now, I think the first two options were more along the lines of what the design intent was. These two were truly actually parallel surfaces. And if that's the case, I recommend those two uh, practices we previously covered over top of this one. But this is also a unique way to picture uh, a tool that doesn't often get utilized. If you want to change the shape of your tolerance zone and you want it to grow or have more uh, restricting tolerance on one side, but the further away you get, the more position you can have, the more uh, orientation you can have, you certainly can. A couple of resulting surfaces you could see here would be that if we had 20 microns at the bottom and 50 microns at the top, our surfaces could deviate in. Obviously, the bottom can only deviate in so much, but the tops can deviate in quite a bit. And we can also have two surfaces that deviate outward. Those surfaces can deviate out a little bit at the bottom and a lot more at the top. But we can also have something that looks like this. And we can see that if the tops deviate in their most amount and the body bottoms deviate outward their most amount, we can still have this level of surface. Uh, so we can have some level of orientation control. We can allow a certain amount, but this is a very unique scenario. So make sure it applies to the functionality of your part before considering it. Uh, if the two surfaces are parallel, like I mentioned, I recommend using, using the first two examples we covered in this video. So thanks for submitting your question and have a great day. Our goal is to be your best source for GD&T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GDNT and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles.